Hello, hello, welcome back to episode something or other. I don't know how many episodes we're in at this point. The Cubane series. All right, where are we? Uh, so I'll put the whole bloody schematic up on the screen now. Thank you, editing Tom. Yeah, so we, we've done a few steps. Look at us go. We've got um, some product. Where is it? Yeah, so that's where we are. Um, what we need to do now is the bromination. So this is our product here in the container and we need to put some um, bromide groups onto it here. To do that, we need elemental bromine in 1,4-dioxane, which is a solvent here. Both of these things I have made previously and actually I think I have videos on both of them. Made bromine from a bull chemical called something or other, bromochloro... Hide it. Actually, I'm not going to say that word because I got it wrong in the video and people are still paying me out about it. Bromochlorodimethyl. I'm going to get this last word wrong. Hide. Hide it. Hide it. Well, one for dioxane we made for ethylene glycol, which is the same chemical we used to make these protecting groups here. So, uh, actually, if I just pan the camera down a little. Yeah, so this is where our dioxane is. Uh, this is how much dioxane we have, and we have some amount of bromine in an ampule here. Bromine. So the bromine is quite old now, um, but you know, it does keep in these ampules, luckily. Now, is it enough of either chemical? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, and also, another thing is, uh, both these chemicals are quite old. The problem with the bromine is that we made it from a method that um, we think there's quite a lot of chloride contamination in it, or quite a lot of chlorine, and that's not great because if we have some chlorine in the bromine, that there's a risk that we put a chloro group on the molecule at some point. If at any point a chloro group gets substituted instead of a bromo group, then, you know, it's going to be a complete loss. So we want um, pretty pure bromine. We also want quite dry dioxane. This has to be a quite a dry environment, I think, for it to work. This dioxane is quite old and we know it absorbs water from the atmosphere, so it's not going to be dry anymore. I also did a peroxide test on it a little while ago and um, it's got oh, um, some peroxides in it. So that, that's no oh. good either. So, so we can't just distill it straight from where it is. And also in terms of scale, we need quite a lot of both of these things because so we need at least three moles of bromine for one mole of our, our psychopentanone ether ketal ketal psychopentanone ketal it's tempting to say we only have three bromine groups over here so we only need like one and a half br2s because you know one and a half times br2 is is three but um that's not how it adds on you know we need um, one BR2 to add one BR group on there. Does that make sense? And the paper we're following uses just slightly over a three times amount, so so there is a little bit of an excess of bromine. The consequence of this means that um, we need quite like really a shit ton of bromine. Uh, for 10 grams of our ketal uh, reagent here, we need nearly 40 grams of bromine. So uh, it's like 38, 39 grams. Once we got 40 grams here, if we wanted to convert this all to um, the tribromo product here, you know, we'd need heaps and heaps of bromine. Yeah, I, I tend not to do things on a very small scale to start with, which um, sets me up to fail quite significantly if you haven't noticed across the years. Uh, uh, any advice about this reaction that you have, um, please let me know in the comments because we're not going to get to it this video. But um, I feel like the important thing about this reaction is um, the quality of the reagents. So we really want to kind of have good dry dioxane, bromine without any chloride contaminant, chlor chlorine contaminant, and, and, and is dry once again. I think today I'm just going to go from the bromide salt to bromine via an oxidizer like... Um, uh, hydrogen peroxide, I reckon. Got quite a bit of that, and it's just been sitting around in storage, and I'm kind of sick of storing it. So, um, if I use hydrogen peroxide, then um, we won't have any halogen contaminants in our bromine. Let's get let's get started on some reagent acquisition. Okay, that's, that's enough. Starting with the dioxane here, I've got the same antifreeze that we um, distilled the ethylene glycol off of, mostly ethylene glycol. It's got a tiny bit of water in it um, and a whole lot of dye. So we got, what, like 250, 300 mils or so there. I think it's about 300 mils. So we got uh, 55 mils. I think I used 70 mils of concentrated sulfuric acid last time. I've got 55 mils. Um, just, I'm just going to see if it works still with slightly less acid because, um, you know, I'm always interested in conserving my concentrated sulfuric acid useful reagent and then we're just going to set up for simple distillation run it uh, up until the point where it starts to tar over and we're going to stop it before it tars up because we don't need a whole lot of dioxane as soon as that stuff starts to really tar it um, creates a lot more work for me in the cleanup so um, we're going to try and prevent it from tarring up and i'm saying that now with authority because i know that i won't be able to stop it 
as per always. A few moments later. How do I keep letting this happen? <laughs> Why? Why? All right, dioxane set up uh, 2.0. Already uh, charred up, so hopefully that means it's got no more char to char up, which is uh, doesn't make any sense, no. Uh, um, Got to watch it a little better and not let it get so hot like it did last time. Which um, I'd like to pretend didn't happen, but um, look at that solid lump of carbon in that flask. Ha! What an atrocity. Anyway, wouldn't be an Extraction Deny video unless we committed at least three atrocities. Uh, oh well. Um, continuing on. So here's our dioxane. I've combined it with the uh, the old dioxane. It's very yellow, of course. So I'm do something about the peroxides, vaguely dry it out, and also remove some of the yellow. What we're going to be doing, as per we did in the previous dioxane run, is put it over some chocolate ice cream, which in our case is um, potassium hydroxide. I don't know how it's managed to survive in this chocolate ice cream container for so long. It kind of sounds like mostly one block, but there is some loose powder in there as well, which is surprising because I was expecting it to have fused into one massive block at this point. But thank you, Buller Family Dairy Chocolate Real Dairy Ice Cream. We've got to filter these sieves off, and there's there's a little bit of gross stuff in this as well. I mean, it's been sitting here for like a week, and um, I think it's done something weird with the sieves. Not the dioxane, but the whatever other impurities are in there. So it's kind of good. We'll filter that off, and it'll get rid of a lot of the shit that's in the dioxane. And also, if you've ever been waiting for a nice demonstration on how to do a nicely folded filter paper, well, I can tell you that this is definitely not the channel for you. <laughs> Fuck, I've never learned that. Fuck, why am I so sweaty already? Just put these gloves on. Oh, the hot weather, it's starting. That's gross. I don't want to feel bad. That's disgusting. All right, so this is what it looks like after an hour. I'm going to get into the set funnel here because uh, there is two layers. Oh, actually, you can see that on camera better than you can see that in person. Anyway, we'll separate that off and then we're gonna put that top layer back over some potassium hydroxide just to further reduce this red color out. I mean, it's turning the yellow into red, which is kind of what we want in a way because that yellow is getting sort of dragged out of solution. It's not getting dragged out of solution, it's polymerizing so that when we go and distill it later on, it won't come over with our dioxane. So now onto the bromine. As part of the bragging rights, I suppose, well, we'll call them bragging rights of, of this project, I really wanted to do most of this stuff from chemicals from the hardware store. Not just saying, oh, I'm using, you know, analytical grade sulfuric acid, but you could get it from the hardware store. I'm actually using the stuff that I got from the hardware store. If I really wanted to stick to that sort of line, then I should be doing this all from uh, stuff that I could get personally from, from the hardware store. We're, we're not because um, I've wanted to try a new method of making bromine. I think this method will be better because we won't have the chlorine contamination as I've mentioned. So we're going to be making it from sodium bromide. I think this is about 500 grams. I also have a little container here um, still of this Bromstart which is sodium bromide from a hardware store. However it's a hardware store in the US. Um, it's not often you find sodium bromide in an Australian hardware store. Um, I think it might be sold but um, I haven't seen it. We're going to be using this uh, but there's only, what, two Oz, two Oz, oh, I know what it says, it's fine, uh, 56 grams of this, you know, we need more bromine than that, so we're going to use some of this and um, well, all of this, let's just use all of this and a considerable amount of this, and we can pretend that I got all the sodium bromide from a hardware store. Also, we're going to be using my 50% acid, sulfuric acid, because I could be using my hardware store grade acid, but it's just such a waste to take um, concentrated acid and then dilute it down when I have um, like two liters of 50% acid that I acquired somewhere from a cleaning store or something. I can't remember. I'm also using my um, 
my uh, peroxide, which I did get over the counter many years ago. Uh, it's been in the freezer since, and um, obviously that's where the liquid still is. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it needs to be used up. It's quite old, and I have no idea what the concentration is. Anyway, source of bromine, acid, oxidizer. So um, we'll just get this all set up. Maybe Americans always give 110%, who knows. Alright, we're nearly ready to go. That sunlight is streaming in to remind me that the sun is setting. Uh, and I'm just starting, but um, anyway, it's a little concerning this peroxide, uh, the fact that it's just <laughs> violently outgassing oxygen, even on its own, seems to imply to me that it's over at least 30% at this point um, still, which is, I think, impressive seeing it's been in the freezer a couple years. Very, very concentrated, so it might be very violent when we add it in here. To make matters worse, I've lost stirring. Um, the bromide is solidified at the bottom. I've still got a heap more to add, but um, I'm not just going to dump in a whole lot of crystals now. We're just going to wait. When we add this to this, it's going to produce a lot of heat, which will heat up the mixture and then should dissolve all the bromide. So, yeah, it should all work out in the end. I've got my long 30 centimeter condenser in here. Uh, I need some ice in there. I need some ice in here just to make sure the fumes stay a little bit controlled. Other than that, I think we're all pretty good to go. Also got my lab coat on. Lab coat, lab coat, because uh, bromine splashes, if they happen, would be very bad to my clothes and also my skin. So yes, lab coat time. Pretty much done here what i'm going to do uh because i'm really out of time for today is just get this bromine i think we've got quite a bit of it sorry it's getting protected from the light by that thing as soon as i set this up the bloody sun came in and i started heating everything up and the bloody vapors were going everywhere doing my best to block out the, the sunlight so what was i saying oh yeah the bromine i'm just going to uh, add some cold sulfuric acid to it leave it in that uh flask uh, i'm just going to put it in this jar as well with some bicarb at the bottom to neutralize any fumes hopefully the layer of sulfuric acid at the top sort of stops the fuming a little ideally i'd be able to put in a freezer but i don't have a lab freezer i'm not about to put bromine in the, in the normal food freezer that that's um not very nice to the freezer or the food but yeah hopefully we've got quite a bit of bromine i'm keen to take it apart and actually see how much bromine we got hell yeah safe and secure well at least i hope so it's got a little layer of sulfuric acid there yeah <laughs> Hopefully it's okay. All right, I'm going to neutralize this bromine solution with some sodium thiosulfate chlorine remover. That's what it says on the front. It's going to be bromine remover. Just going to take a couple of crystals. Beautiful. Here's what our solution looks like after about a week over the potassium hydroxide. So we've got some more water phase separated at the bottom. We also have this kind of solid red mass at the bottom of the flask. You can see it's sort of sticking to the walls there. And this is just, you know, the impurities condensing out, polymerizing out. So I think, I think it's been useful having this another week over the potassium hydroxide to really get rid of all this stuff. We still need to distill it. And I'm fairly sure all the potassium hydroxide would have taken care of the peroxides that we know were present in the dioxane. Uh, but just to overkill it, I'm gonna add some sodium sulfite to this, bisulfite to this, um, which will reduce any uh, peroxides.
some reason I decided to give it a wash with uh, salt water to try and dry it out. In pretty much immediate hindsight, it was a stupid idea because dioxane is quite soluble in water. I think it's miscible in water. We probably lost more dioxane than we dried it out and um, the potassium hydroxide did a reasonable job, I think, of base separating and drying it out. The sodium chloride wash has probably reversed that. So I've dumped a whole lot of salt in to try and drag out the water and get them to phase separate better again. That was a bit stupid. I hope we end up with more dioxane than we started with this whole procedure, but <laughs> I'm worried we're not going to, and that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? God damn. So the way this is meant to work is dioxane has an azeotrope with water, so it will boil at uh, like 85, 80 or so degrees with 18% water, and that's the liquid you collect is 18% water in there. That boils first, and then the pure dioxane boils at 101 degrees. So what I was hoping to see is just a little bit of stuff that comes over early, which contains all your water, and then you throw that away, even though it's 80% or so dioxane, the rest of your stuff comes over dry. Um, God damn, look how much azeotrope came over. Oh, it's so much dark saying, you know, I can't really throw that out. It doesn't leave me with a whole lot of dry stuff. It's finally starting to come over now. Oh, man, that sodium chloride wash must have ruined everything. But if we get a small amount of very dry stuff, that's still useful enough. If we get 50 or so mils, it should be enough for the next step. So what I'm going to do now, rather than distill it and then dry it over sodium and then redistill, I'm just going to put some lumps of sodium into this now. It's mostly dry anyway because all the water has been taken out on the azeotrope. But if I just put in a little couple of lumps of sodium once this cools down a little bit more, then we'll dry it even further and, and just distill it and the stuff we collect at the end will be uh, nice and dry dioxane. I'll keep this for something, we separate it and redistill it later on when we need more dioxane because I'm sure we will need more dioxane in future. I don't know why I keep doing this on such a huge scale and ending up with like fuck all dioxane. It's, this is all we have uh, for the dry stuff. It's about 30 mils. It's got some solid stuff down there, which is itself freezing because I put it in the freezer or the fridge and it started to solidify, which is a really good sign of purity. We have a lot of this stuff. It's probably more concentrated than the azeotrope, which explains where all our dioxane went, but um, it's still too wet for our purposes, so I'll need to redry that if we hope to use it in this reaction. This is our bromine. It's over sulfuric acid. Uh, I've got a hot tip from Eric, who has done this reaction before and sent me some tips on Discord. The bromine contains some sulfuric acid after you dry it with the sulfuric acid. So I'll need to redistill the bromine because the reaction, the bromination reaction that we're doing is particularly sensitive to acid. So we'll need to make sure there's no acid there. I need to redistill the bromine. Could film it, but honestly, I'm not going to because I'm sick of distillations at the moment. I'm sick of filming distillations. Done nothing but distillations recently. We've got our dioxane, we've got our bromine, we've got our um, cyclopentanone key towel ether thing should be all good to do a run of the bromination step i have purchased some tlc plates so i'll be able to monitor the reaction that way i hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you in another video um soon